Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we'll be reviewing the microscopic anatomy of the skeletal muscle fibers. The skeletal muscle fibers are the stars of the show, allowing muscles to perform their various functions. We know that muscle fibers are the microscopic muscle cells having a diameter between 10 and 100 micrometers and an average length of about 10 centimeters which is 4 inches or so, but some can be long as 30 centimeters, which is about a foot. We also know that skeletal muscle fibers are multinucleated, having many nuclei, with most fibers having over 100 nuclei each. This is because during their development, they are the products of the fusion of over 100 cells in the embryonic mesoderm called myoblasts. After this merging together into one single cell, the muscle fiber can no longer divide. Let's now dive deep and take a closer look at the structure of muscle fibers. The muscle fibers are surrounded by a plasma membrane called the sarcolemma. And the prefix sarco means flesh and is often used to describe muscle-related terminology. The sarcolemma is folded inward with thousands of tiny fluid-filled infoldings called transverse or T-tubules, which penetrate the fiber and extend toward the center of the cell. In this illustration of a muscle fiber, we can see here in blue the outer sarcolemma and then these blue tubes, which are the transverse or T-tubules, extending down into and through the body of the muscle fiber. Think of the word transverse, meaning that the tubules are crossing through the fiber. The fluid moving through the T-tubules is interstitial fluid from the external environment surrounding the fiber. This fluid allows the muscle action potential to move quickly along the sarcolemma and down into and through the network of T-tubules, exciting all parts of the muscle fiber at the same time. Inside the sarcolemma is the sarcoplasm, which is the cytoplasm of the muscle fiber. It contains lots of glycogen, which we know from the chemistry unit is a large polysaccharide made of many glucose subunits that is basically like an animal's version of plant's starch molecule. And glycogen's main function is to serve as the fuel to power ATP production. The sarcoplasm also contains a supply of myoglobin. Myoglobin is a hemoglobin-like protein that temporarily stores and releases oxygen molecules that diffuse into the muscle fiber from the surrounding interstitial fluid. The oxygen molecules then move into the muscle fiber's abundant mitochondria for immediate ATP production. Here we see a bunch of mitochondria scattered around the myofibrils. And these myofibrils are tiny protein threads, which are the contractile organelles of the skeletal muscle fiber. They're very tiny, roughly 2 micrometers in diameter, and run along the whole length of the muscle fiber. They contain the striations of protein fibers, these overlapping thick and thin contractile filaments, that gives skeletal muscle its striped appearance. You can think of muscle tissue's arrangement like a tube in a tube in a tube in a tube, where this outermost tube is the whole muscle belly or body itself. Then the fascicles are another tube. We know the fascicles are bundles of muscle fibers. The muscle fibers are another tube, and then the smallest tube are the innermost myofibrils. 
Wrapped around each myofibril is an organelle called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, or SR. This is shown here in yellow throughout the muscle fiber. It's a very extensive, complex network of fluid-filled membrane sacs that's similar to the smooth ER found in other cells. At both ends of the SR are enlarged membrane sacs called terminal cisterns. These are located just adjacent to the T-tubules found on either side of the organelle. T-tubules shown here in blue. So what we have here in this relationship of one T-tubule with two terminal cisterns is a group of three called a triad. We see this arrangement of triads throughout the entire length of the muscle fiber. We'll learn more about the functions of the sarcoplasmic reticulum later on, but for now, just remember that it is a major storage organelle storing and releasing calcium ions, which will go on and play a major role in the process of muscle contraction.